This scale from A and D can sense three thousandths of a grain that's less than one two millionth of a pound, making it the most accurate scale I've got in the shop. And in this video, we're gonna get hands on with it. Yavin yeah, here from ultimatereloader.com. This is the EJ54 D2 from a and D. I've recently partnered with Cambridge Environmental. They sell lab balances that you've seen like that a and FX120i that I use on a frequent basis. This scale is a little bit different. The a and is a bit more robust. It's a laboratory scale with a capacity of about 1500 grains, but it's got a, the ability to sense about two hundredths of a grain. This EJ54 D2 has the ability to register three thousandths of a grain. This is very, very, very sensitive scale, plus it's got a USB interface. This is gonna be an ideal scale for not only doing precision load development where I'm publishing results and you all are making decisions or comparing your own data based off of that, but also for the tested stories that I do where I'm weighing components like bullets and brass and primers and the more accurate I can get the better. So we're going to get this scale out of the box, we'll get it set up and calibrated and then we'll do some measurements with it. So I'm going to go ahead and get this box open. Cambridge Environmental is a great place to buy your precision scales. Hodgson reloading manual right there in the top. Okay, let's give you guys a look. See, we've got some styrofoam crating here that is cradling the scale. Here's the scale itself. Let's see where we go, there we go. Got an open end of the bag. There we have the scale. I gotta be sure to check every nook and cranny because I've actually forgotten things in the box before. <laughs> okay, look, looks like that's gonna be a calibration weight. We've got AC adapter here. Good to go on that. Okay, and then we've got the materials, printed materials, cables, and accessories. Okay, owner's manual, yay. Extra materials here, looks like a battery door. Platen, actually that's probably the platen, and then we've got a pan and a USB cable. Okay, I'm gonna get this all set up neat and tidy, then we'll get it set up and start weighing some stuff. In terms of setup, there's really not much to do. This particular scale has a sliding door on the top of the windscreen, and if you lift up on these little levers on the side, you can completely remove the windscreen, which is great. You're gonna take the plastic platen, put it on the scale sensor, and then take the platen cover, which is metal, put it over the top of that, put your windscreen back on, and then you can put the pan on the platen if you so desire, plug it in to AC power, turn the unit on and wait about a half an hour before you calibrate the unit. I've had this scale powered up for well over an hour now, and that means I'm extra sure that this scale is up to temperature, it's running at steady state, and I should be good to go to calibrate now. One additional note, after the initial setup steps that I walked you through, I also adjusted all four feet. They're independently adjustable, and that allows you to use the integral bubble level to get the scale perfectly level. Now to calibrate, there's a little plastic door under the front of the unit. We're gonna pop that off, and there's a tiny little button here, and we're just gonna hold that until it displays cal. Now I have a 20 gram weight that I got separately from Cambridge Environmental, and if we hit sample, it's gonna show us what the calibration weight is that the scale thinks we're using. It says 20 grams. If it's not matching here what you have, you can very easily change that. So if we hit print, that's going to get us out of that screen. We're gonna hit print to calibrate just with the platen. And then it says 20. Now, just to be extra sure that I'm being above board here, I'm gonna put on my white gloves because we don't want to get finger oils on this calibration weight. Sounds a bit excessive, but we are talking about an ultra precision weight here. Okay, we're gonna close the windscreen and then hit print again. Okay, 
it says end now. Now we can turn the machine on and we should be fully calibrated. So to start off our testing, I thought I would take a look at a powder that I'm very familiar with and that's Hodgdon Varget. I happen to know that each of the granules weigh about 0.02 grains. So I thought it'd be interesting to zero out the scale here and see what happens when we add granules, granule by granule. I don't have a hole through the side of the windscreen here to, to use the trickler directly. So I'm gonna pick them up with these tweezers here. Okay, there's one stick. 0 0.035 is what it's saying. Let's see what happens when we get two in there. There's two. 0 0.05. Point zero seven. Interesting to see how these vary a little bit. Point zero nine. So point zero two four six eight. These are a little bit heavier than exactly point zero two. Okay, so now we've got five and we're at 0.11. That makes sense. So let's see what happens when we add a little bit more powder. That's a fairly good lot there. Just to be extra sure, I'm gonna close the windscreen lid and let things stabilize. This kind of a scale is very sensitive to shifts in temperature, vibration, or air movement. It says stable at 46.89. Take that off. I had the weight shift just a little bit there. There we go. That's probably closer. There we go. 46.89 <laughs> after it settled. So that's very good. What I want to do next is up the weight a little bit more. We're going to take a look at some components and also take a look at the USB interface. So I just got the scale interfaced with the PC and let me tell you, it could not have been easier. I've worked with scales that use an RS-232 serial interface and require you to install different drivers, USB to serial converter, you've got COM ports, you've got baud rates, you've got stop bits. None of that is required here. This unit came pre-installed with the USB interface board, which is on the back there. You can buy it separately and put it in. When I plugged it into Windows 10, this is my Windows 10 laptop, it found the drivers, it installed it as a uh, USB human interface device, USB HID device. So more or less, this is like having a USB keyboard plugged into your computer. Every time you hit the print button, it's gonna type out all the numbers and that is smooth and seamless. So now's where things get fun. I'm gonna put my white gloves back on. This is more or less a preview of an upcoming story where I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at the same brand of brass and to look at the same chambering, same cartridge with two different primer sizes. Here we've got Lapua brass for 6.5 Creedmoor with their small primer pocket and the new large primer pocket. So during the filming of this video, I'm actually sort of filming two videos. I call that efficient workflow. So what I've got here is I've got Google Docs open. I've got the spreadsheet where I'm gonna collect the data. I've got the first cell selected. I'm gonna re-zero the scale here. And what I'm gonna be doing is dropping a piece of brass on right in the middle, waiting till it says stable, and then hitting print. Look at that. I really like that. So I'm going to go through this process. With 10 pieces of large primer pocket brass and 10 pieces of small primer pocket brass.
Okay, so that's it for the large primer pocket brass. Now we move over the small primer pocket brass and repeat the process. There we go, we've just weighed 20 pieces of brass and logged the data directly into Google Sheets. That is pretty awesome. So there's your quick look at the A&D EJ54D2 precision scale. This is a solid performer and it is at a lower price point compared to something like the laboratory balance that I mentioned, the A&D FX120i with different pros and cons on each. I really like the USB interface on this better than I like the RS-232 interface on the A&D FX120i. This scale has lower capacity, about 350 grains, somewhere in that range. I'll have the full data in the write-up, whereas the A&D FX120i can handle about 1,500 grains. So they're kind of on a little bit of a different scale, if you will. Also, I noticed that this scale has a longer settling time. The FX120i, for instance, comparing the two, has a very fast acquisition and settling time. So different price points, different, different accuracy levels, and different capabilities. One thing I do know is that you're gonna be seeing this scale a lot more on the channel. And here's what I'd like to know, is what do you think, which precision scale are you using and why? Please drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. Also, make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not gonna wanna miss the tested stories that this scale is featured in, precision reloading stories that this is featured in, and so on and so forth. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Again, first link in the video description, full article, I'll have a link to the product page for this. I'm also on Patreon. Got Ultimate Reloader shirts at the Ultimate Reloader store. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading. <laughs>